This lesson is part of a series of training videos where we will look at a specific product and a specific installation, comparing our installation instructions and good practice with actual conditions on a job site. The primary goal is to help you become more familiar with our products, enabling you to tell if they have been installed correctly and if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Along the way, we'll also discuss what's important for when we need to determine if something is close enough, what's dangerous for when we need to bring something to the contractor's immediate attention, and why our products are used the way they're used. These videos will assume you're already somewhat familiar with the products being discussed. If you haven't already done so, please take some time to watch our other product training videos that go into detail on our various products, features, and components. Vibroacoustics creates noise control solutions for the HVAC industry addressing both airborne and structure-borne transmission paths. Our vibration isolation products help mitigate equipment vibrations that could cause noise problems in buildings. In this lesson, we'll look at spring hanger isolators and their use with hydronic piping systems. We're going to do things a little differently for this video, though the site visit walk around videos we'll see are from the Daniels Waterfront mixed use building we've seen in other installation videos, we're not going to reference project drawings and submittals. Spring hangers for piping are often selected after the system is installed and at operating weight, so drawings are not typically done. In many cases, a survey is done to see where the pipe supports are located so that appropriate isolators are selected to match the gravity loads at each point. We call this a spring hanger takeoff. In this video, we're going to review the various kinds of spring hanger isolators and then discuss certain features and installation requirements to look for during a site visit. Here is a compilation of images from our website showing four different variants of spring hanger isolators. At the top are the simplest versions. We call them SH for spring hanger. They come in four different sizes with four different deflections from 1 inch to 4 inch. The SHSN and SH1 both provide 1 inch deflection, and the SH3 and SH4 boxes are the same size. The next group are the same as the SH versions but with an additional rubber element at the top of the box. This is probably the most popular spring hanger version since it is the most cost effective product that provides isolation across a broad range of frequencies. There is no SH4 at this time since the box isn't tall enough to accommodate both. The next group of isolators is like the SH isolators but with the addition of a rubber cup under the spring that provides some isolation for higher frequencies as well as better protection against misaligned hanger rods touching the hanger box. The last group shown here is a combination of all three. These have springs, rubber elements, and rubber cups. Typically these are provided where specifically required by project documents. They provide the highest degree of protection from the widest range of frequencies and from short circuiting caused by misaligned hanger rods. Not shown here are the pre-compressed versions. All of these hangers shown here are available in a form where the spring is pre-compressed using a section of threaded rod, washers, and securing nuts. So altogether there are eight different spring hanger models to choose from. Part of performing site inspections is being able to identify the product seen and to recognize whether something meets the project requirements. It is also helpful to be able to advise a contractor on possible product substitutions where problems may arise due to performance or space limitations. So let's take a look at the data sheets. We'll just look at isolators that use the same 1 inch deflection springs as representative of the other available models. First is the SH1 data sheet showing three different hanger box sizes ranging from 50 to 3500 pounds in capacity. Next is the SHR1 data sheet showing two different hanger boxes, now with rubber elements at the top, rated up to 1800 pounds. Next is the SHB1 data sheet showing the one box size that includes a rubber cup in the bottom, rated up to 800 pounds. And the last is the SHRB1 data sheet with its one box size and also rated up to 800 pounds. Since we are continually updating and expanding our product lines, make sure to check our website for the most up-to-date information on our products and installation requirements. Let's take a closer look at the first two versions, the SH and SHR. A common isolator used for supporting pipe is the SH1N. It has a single color-coded spring in its housing. As an example, an 8-inch pipe filled with water weighs about 50 pounds per foot, and clevis supports are often spaced about 10 feet apart, which means a single isolator may hold about 500 pounds, so SH1N500 could be a good choice. Its spring is yellow. Color coding springs makes it very easy to inspect on a job site to make sure the right springs are in the right place. For heavier loads, there are larger boxes that can hold two springs at once. There will be an outer spring and an inner spring. For example, we're going to see an SH1S1100 soon, which has a white outer spring and a white inner spring. While we're here, I want to point out that the N boxes have 13 16 inch holes in the top of the hanger boxes, and the S boxes have 1 and 1 16 inch diameter holes. 
These are sized to accommodate hanger rods up to 3 quarter inch and 1 inch respectively. However, when smaller rods are used, they often get installed off center, which can cause the box to tilt, which can result in springs being misaligned. Down in the notes section of the datasheet, we see that the springs are all designed for 50% additional travel to solid, which effectively means that the springs can support an additional 50% load until the spring coils all touch. So that SH1S 1100 isolator we just looked at can hold at least 1650 pounds before either spring goes solid and it no longer works as an isolator. So while it would still be safe when solid, we don't want to see any springs that are flat or even near flat on a job site because that would mean that either the springs were misselected or misadjusted. Springs in any spring isolator should be close to their design deflection. On spring hangers supporting equipment or pipe that includes seismic cable restraints, there need to be uplift stop washers to help prevent excessive vertical movement. We'll see these again on the installation instructions. Where these isolators are used with suspended equipment, the datasheet can be filled in with the equipment name or tag and a description, which typically includes the overall equipment weight. This area is used to show locations for each of the isolators since each support point may have a different load. Numbers are put in the small squares which then correspond with the list on the right where the isolator models would be shown. Moving over to the SHR datasheet, we see it looks very similar to the SH sheet with the same hanger boxes and springs. However, there is a new column that shows the rubber element color that is installed at the top of the isolator box. This is something else that can be confirmed at a job site. One of the notes on most of the spring hanger datasheets states that the hanger is designed to allow support rod misalignment through a 30 degree arc without contacting the hanger box. So while it is best for both the upper and lower hanger rods to be vertical, collinear, and parallel with the box housing, it is common for one or the other to be at a slight angle to the box. This design feature allows a hanger rod to pass through the hole in the bottom of the hanger box and be 15 degrees off vertical in any direction before the rod makes contact. This is a common feature that is often specified to help avoid short circuiting. So that wraps up our overview of the data sheets. Let's take a look at the corresponding installation instructions. As before, there are installation instructions for each of the different spring hanger models from SH to SHR, SHB, and finally SHRB. Again, we'll look at the SH and SHR versions since the others are copied from these. The instructions are split into two options. Option A describes how to install the isolator after the system or equipment has been installed, and Option B describes how to install along with the equipment or system. With Option A, the equipment or system is hung, filled, and brought up to operating weight, temporary supports are placed on the support point, and then the support rod is cut, removing about an inch of rod. The rods are then separated and the isolator hanger box is added between the two rods and then secured in place. The load is then transferred to the spring by adjusting the nut. It is important not to overload the springs. We don't want them to go flat, so the temporary supports may need to stay in place until additional isolators are added and then the system or equipment lifted all at once, loading the hangers proportionally. On equipment, that usually means following a pattern such as is shown below. This shows adjusting the isolators in opposite corners and then adjusting the middle isolators. And then an important final instruction is to ensure the lower support rod is not touching the edges of the hole in the bottom of the hanger box since this would create a vibration isolation short circuit. The vibration in the lower support rod coming from the equipment or pipe would transfer into the hanger box instead of going into the spring to be absorbed. On installations where the spring hanger box is near a seismic cable restraint, it is important to add a vertical uplift stop washer and to make sure it is a quarter inch away from the bottom of the hanger box. It is also important to secure the top of the box with either an upper support nut or by mounting the box tight to or within a quarter inch of the supporting structure. Both of these are to prevent excessive vertical movement during a seismic event. Taking a look at the SHR installation instructions, there is little difference from the SH instructions except that the top of the hanger box cannot be touching the supporting structure, and when installed along with seismic restraints, the hanger box must be installed a quarter inch away from supporting structure so that it acts as a vertical limit stop. Uplift stop washers must also be installed as shown. Here we can compare the SH with the SHR instructions side by side so you can see an important difference. The top of SH isolator hanger boxes can be secured, while the top of SHR boxes need to be free from direct contact with structure. The upper isolator portion must be free to move. It is unfortunately too common to see SHR isolators secured tight to structure, which short circuits the rubber element isolation portion of the isolator. So we'll take a look at some spring hangers installed on condenser water pipes. We've seen these before in some other videos we've done on other isolation products shown here, but now we're going to talk about them. 
The first isolator is an SHR-1S 1100. There is a white spring inside a white outer spring, and there is a green rubber element at the top. The hanger rods appear relatively straight, and we can see that the lower rod is not touching the whole sides. The next isolator just has a white outer spring, so it is an SHR-1S 1000. Its lower rod also is not touching the sides of the hanger box holes. Let's take another look at this installation. We'll focus on the isolators, and specifically the middle isolator here. We're going to ask a few questions based on the information we've learned from the data sheets and installation instructions, as well as some personal experience to determine if everything is okay. First, is there anything dangerous? No. Everything appears to be secured and nothing is swaying around and nothing appears bent or damaged or overloaded in any way. Its general appearance is good. It looks like the datasheet picture. Normally we would now check to see if this is the right isolator in the right place, but I wasn't able to find project documentation to support the selections. I did find that this project called for using spring hanger isolators on the first three pipe support points from all vibrating equipment connections, and this isolator is on one of the first three points away from the pumps. It's possible these isolators were selected by the contractor without assistance from the Vibroacoustics Design Department, so we'll just be checking for general conformance with good installation practices. Next, is the spring straight and not bent over? Yes. I have seen installations where the spring was not sitting flat on the bottom of the housing and the lower hanger rod was significantly off-center, due in part to being smaller than the max rod diameter size, bending the spring to one side so that it may contact with the side of the hanger box. This spring is straight and not in contact with the box sides. The lower rod is smaller than the maximum allowable 1 inch diameter rod size, but it is roughly in the center of the spring compression cup. Fourth, is there clearance between the upper and lower support rods? Yes. I ask this one because you can tell from the ends of the rods that the contractor used option A from the installation instructions. The rod was cut and a section removed to install the isolator. It is important that there is no short circuiting from one rod to the other. These rods are slightly offset, but that's okay. We want to make sure there is no metal to metal contact of the rods to each other or to the hanger box, which leads us to the next question. Fifth, is there clearance between the rods and the housing holes? Yes. As we see here, the lower hanger rod is nowhere near the sides of the lower hole and has used only a degree or two of the 15 degree from vertical allowance. Sixth, is there adequate clearance around the hanger box? Yes. The top of this SHR isolator box is not tight to structure and there is plenty of room around it. This project was very tidy, but I have seen plenty of installations where spring hangers were located in tight places and often in contact with surrounding ducts, pipes, conduits, and equipment. Any contact will reduce the effectiveness of the vibration isolation and may lead to noise problems. This project did not have any seismic restraint requirements, so there are no uplift stop washers to inspect here. If there were, we would also be checking for a quarter inch gap and a pair of jam nuts below the stop washer holding it in place. We're going to walk around a few other pumps on this job and look at the spring hangers overhead and see what we can see. We'll start with the same condenser water pumps we were just looking at, but now we'll look at the discharge pipe header up high. There are quite a few hangers up there and it can be difficult to inspect from below. But one thing we can do is look for rod misalignment. Does the lower rod touch the side of the hanger box hole? From an angle, it can be difficult to tell but moving under the isolator, it becomes readily apparent that there is no contact. This isolator here has its rod off-center, but since there is no contact, it's okay. This hanger also appears slightly off-center, but since the lower hole is large enough to accommodate 15 degree misalignment in any direction, there's no problem. These yellow spring isolators are SHR-1N500s. Considering the six points we just discussed, I'd say these all look good. The discharge pipe header on these two inline pumps is supported by a couple of hanger isolators. Let's see if we can identify them as we check the installation. There's a black spring, a green rubber element at the top, and you can see a black ring protruding out of the bottom hole. These are SHRB1N300 isolators, complete with spring top rubber element and a bottom rubber cup between the spring and hanger box. As we can see from this photo, and considering our six points, everything appears to be okay. 
I will say, however, that what the upper support rod is attached to looks a bit odd, since it's just a piece of unistrut cantilevered away from a structural angle trapeze duct support. Though since it is straight and appears solid enough, and not in our scope of work, there is no reason to raise any concern. This is an example of contractor creativity. One last area we'll look at is above these inline pumps. Notice that the rod on the left does not have an isolator, but the next hanger rod to the right on the pipe does. It is the third of the first three points from the pumps. And while we look at these SHR1N500 isolators, I'll comment about that practice, that is, installing spring hanger isolators on just the first three points from vibrating equipment. It is better than rigidly supporting the pipe directly to structure, however it may not prevent noise problems depending on how much vibration there is and how the building is built. Vibrations can travel very far in steel pipes, and just isolating the first few feet is often not adequate. Some specifications require spring hangers for the first 50 or even 100 feet away from vibrating equipment. If there were a problem here, it would not be too difficult to cut in additional isolators to help reduce structure-borne noise through the pipes. These hangers all appear to be installed okay, considering the six points we discussed earlier. The upper and lower rods all appear straight, and there is no metal-to-metal -metal contact that would short-circuit the isolation. So with that, we'll wrap it up. In this video, we've gone over the various kinds of spring hangers, focusing on some of their design features and installation requirements. We've looked at a few spring hangers on a project where they were used to support hydronic piping and asked six simple questions to make sure there was nothing dangerous and that they were installed in a manner that enabled them to do their jobs as vibration isolators without interference or short circuits. Spring hangers are key elements to use with HVAC systems to control vibration and prevent noise problems in buildings. I hope through this lesson you become more familiar with spring hangers and their use. 